go. Good evening. I'm Alan Joins, Mayor of Winston-Salem, and it's my pleasure to call to order this March 20th meeting of the Winston-Salem City Council. And I'd ask the City Clerk to please call the roll. <clears throat> Councilmember Larson. Present. Councilmember Clark. Here. Councilmember Mundy. Present. Councilmember Scipio. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Adams. Here. Councilmember Taylor. Present. Councilmember McIntosh. Here. Councilmember Burke. Here. Thank you. And while we add, I do want to formally recognize our new city clerk officially, uh, Jamie uh, Waldick Cranfield. We're delighted to have you as our new city clerk. And I saw your deputy here earlier. I think uh, Tanya Banner is out there. I can't see. Yeah, there she is. Tanya Banner is the new deputy city clerk. So we're ready to go. We're going to have a moment of silence in just a moment right now, but as we do, I'd like for us to remember Tanya McFadder, who died recently. She was a member of the city clerk's office, and I would ask that we keep Tanya's family uh, in our thoughts and prayers. So please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you very much. And would you join the city council and me in the Pledge of Allegiance? <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our Sergeant in Arms tonight is Sergeant G.M. Masterson. Madison, excuse me. I'm glad to have you with us, Sergeant. We, uh, tonight's agenda of the City Council is comprised of two parts, the general agenda and the consent agenda. And it's always the practice of this council to take the consent agenda as the first order of business. Items on this agenda have been unanimously recommended by a committee of the council or being submitted in accordance with established city procedure. There'll be no discussion of the items on this agenda unless the City Council member asks that an item be removed and it'll be considered individually. Items not removed from consent agenda will be enacted with one motion. But before we get to the consent agenda, we do have one honorarium item. And uh, Ms. Uh, City Clerk, if you'd read that one, please. Item H1, resolution honoring the 2022 City of Winston-Salem retired employees. Thank Where you. Go ahead. Yeah. Whereas there are 89 City of Winston-Salem employees who have retired in 2022, and whereas the collective years served by the retired employees total 2,169, and whereas of all the 2022 retirees, Julia Conley from the Support Services Division of the Police Department and Robert Newland III from the Construction and Maintenance Division of the Utilities Department have each served the longest with 36 years of service. And whereas the work of all city employees are valued and appreciated by the mayor, city council, and the citizens of Winston-Salem. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and Winston-Salem City Council approve honoring the aforementioned 2022 City of Winston-Salem retired employees and wish them much success as they embark on new endeavors. Is there a motion? I move. Second. Motion second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That is unanimous. And we are scrolling the names of our 89 uh, individuals who retired. Uh, we are so thankful for the contributions they made to the city of Winston-Salem and more importantly to the citizens of, of Winston-Salem. I think you said it represents 2,169 years of service to the citizens. That's pretty, pretty amazing. Are there any retirees that are with us tonight? Mm -hmm. Did you please stand and let us? Thank you. Bobby's out there. <laughs> So thank you all again for your service to the city of Winston-Salem. Uh, we are televising this meeting live tonight on TV 13, and it will be uh, replayed tomorrow at 9 a.m. and again Wednesday at 9 p.m. Of course, you know copies of our agenda as well as videos of previous meetings are always available online at the city's website and just click on watch meetings online. Council members, are there any items on the consent agenda you wish to pull? C8. Is there a motion on the balance? I move for approval for the uh, balance of the Second. consent agenda. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? Any no discussion? All those in favor of that, please vote yes. Anyone opposed, vote no.
That is unanimous. Thank you very much. I do want to just uh, congratulate uh, Assistant City Manager John Lee Taylor for item C1, where we're buying two new fancy dancy uh, leaf uh, collecting uh, devices. So it's going to be a help us out next year, Mr. Taylor, I'm sure. We'll go to item C8. Item C8, resolution awarding construction contract for Lakeview Drive bridge replacement. North Ward recommended by Finance Committee. Customer Clark. While this is in the North Ward, the topic uh, probably has more um, appropriateness to the West Ward. And if Mr. King would please comment on the selection of the contract and what we've done in that area. Mr. King. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Council Members. Um, so the item before you see eight here is to award a contract to Smith Row for the replacement of the Lakeview Drive Bridge. As many of you are aware, and we discussed at committee, that bridge has been out of service for some time now, uh, and the residents have had to find other means of access in and out of their community. So this, this request, um, should it be approved, would award the contract to Smith Row. As Council Member Clark alluded to, Smith Row is our contractor on the Metal Art Widening Project, and we've received several comments about the delays associated with that project. Staff met with uh, the leadership of Smith Row probably two weeks ago because we had some of the same concerns. Um, based on those conversations, staff is comfortable with Smith Row's ability to not only get moving in a, in a good manner back on the Metal Art Project, but also to complete the Lakeview Drive Project in a timely manner. So based on those comments, staff is comfortable with this request and with our vendor here for the Lakeview Drive Bridge. Go ahead, Ms. Clark. Uh, I would like to make a comment on the Metal Arc, since this is the same contractor, just said <coughs> it's out for everybody. Metal Arc has probably been the poster child of everything that, that can go wrong with a project. Uh, this is, it was actually approved in the 2014 bond referendum, way mm -hmm. back when. Mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason, some some projects have to be beginning, some at the end. This one was pushed towards the end, just uh, just just was. We then ran into a long delay. I would say well over a year with the school system in coordinating what we were doing at the at the two schools that are right in the middle of Metal Arc on their egress and ingress, uh, their traffic flows. Uh, we had delays with both Piedmont Natural Gas moving gas lines and uh, Duke Energy moving telephone poles. Um, I have personally met with the management and ownership of Smith Road twice. Uh, they have the same problem that everybody else has. Uh, if you saw the paper this morning, the governor uh, was announcing a new plan. The state of North Carolina has 10, 15, 20,000 empty open positions, some huge, huge number. We here at the city have over 500 empty positions. About 22% of our workforce in Smith Row has about a 25% uh, shortfall in their workers. Uh, I felt like they were doing the right things as far as trying to find workers, working with their community colleges, putting in uh, internship programs, all those type things. Uh, with, I would say, with just mod modest success. Um, something has happened to millions of workers in this country, and no one quite knows what has happened, but everybody is, is short workers. And, uh, but having said that, it, we do need to get the road finished, and we did uh, actually meet with the owner Smith Road last, oh, about two weeks ago, as Aaron said. And they assured me they would be starting work today, which they did, and will be out there every day that the weather permits until it is finished. Uh, so uh, we're particularly pushing to have the road finished south of the school because that's it's probably two-thirds done already. But that will be uh, an important part as far as helping with the uh, uh, intersection with the schools and the traffic there. So with that, uh, comments, I will move approval of C8. There's second. Second. Motion second to approve item C8 in discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please vote yes. Anyone opposed, vote no. <coughs> and that is unanimous. Thank you, Councilman Clark. We'll now go to the general agenda, which is comprised of the following. We have item related to the Kimberly Park Hydroponic Farm Management. We have items related to increasing the supply of affordable housing for low and moderate income persons here in Winston-Salem. We have an item <coughs> related to appointments and reappointments to boards and commissions, as well as the public comment period. 
The public comment period is a time set aside for citizens to voice their opinions on matters that are germane to city government. When the public comment period is called, each speaker will be given three minutes for the, and uh, the comment period will be limited to a total of uh, 30 minutes. May we have item uh, G1, please. Item G1, resolution awarding contract for the Kimberly Park Hydroponic Farm Management. Nor located in the North Ward, recommended by Community Development, Housing, General Government, and Finance Committees. It did come out of the Housing General Government Committee unanimous, and in fact, I recognize the Chairman, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Adams. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> I move for approval of item G1. Second. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion, please uh, vote uh, yes, and anyone opposed, vote no. The motion passes with a vote of seven to one. Councilman Clark voting negative. Item G2. Item G2, authorization to convey four city-owned vacant lots located in the Cleveland Avenue neighborhood to Habitat for Humanity of Forsyth County for the purpose of increasing the supply of affordable housing for low and moderate income persons as permitted by SL 2021-44 SB 145, recommended by the Community Development, Housing, General Government, and Finance Committees. Council members, we do need to excuse Council Member Burt from this item. She serves on the board of Habitat, and the new state law requires that uh, ethics. Do it. So uh, I would entertain a motion to excuse Council Member I have Burt. A move. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Council Member Mayor Pro Tem has the motion there. Um, I move that we excuse Council Member Burt from voting on and participating in the discussion regarding agenda item G2. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of that motion, please say aye. Uh, anyone opposed? No. All right. <clears throat> Councilman Burke, you're excused from this item. Thank you. And uh, is there a motion on this, uh, Councilman Burke? May I, approach you? I move for approval of item G2. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Not. All those in favor of the motion, please indicate by voting yes. Anyone opposed? Vote no. The motion passes unanimously with Councilmember Burt being excused from voting. Thank you. <coughs> Item G3. <coughs> Item G3, Mayor joins recommendations for appointment to the Human Relations Commission. Jason McKinney, term expiring December 2025. Jerry Morin, term expiring December 2025. Travis Evans, term expiring December 2023. And Erica Zulaga, term expiring December 2023. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. And a second. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of this motion, please indicate by voting yes. Anyone opposed, vote no. That is unanimous. Thank you. Item G4. Item G4, Mayor joins recommendations for the appointment to the Urban Food Policy Council. Cheryl Scurry, term expiring September 2024. Sandra Turner, term expiring September 2024. And Bradley Shugel, term expiring September 2023. Move for approval. Second. Second. Councilmember McIntosh, any discussion on this item? All those in favor of the motion, please indicate by voting yes. Anyone opposed, vote no. And that is unanimous. Thank you. Item G5. Item G5, Mayor joins recommendations for appointment to the Recreation and Parks Commission. Mark A. Flowers, Sr., term expiring May 2026. Move for approval. Second. Thank you, motion and second. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please indicate by voting yes. Anyone opposed, vote no. That's unanimous, thank you very much. And then item uh, G6. Item G6, Mayor joins recommendations for appointment to the Citizens Police Review Board. Eusebio Velez, term expiring April 2026. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Okay. Second. Thank you. Motion and second. Any discussion? Not all those in favor, please indicate by voting yes. Anyone opposed, vote no. And that is unanimous. Thank you all very much. And I want to thank the council members who uh, provided some good names uh, for our, our boards and commissions here. 
So now we go to the public comment period. As I mentioned, this is a time once per month that we invite citizens to address us on matters that are germane to city government. And we'll limit the comments to 30 minutes and each individual will be limited to three minutes. If you would please state your name and address for the record. Um, first, Matthew Myers. My name is Matthew Mayers. I live at 2844 Wesleyan Lane. Uh, thank you all for this opportunity to speak and happy spring. Um, last Monday, uh, quite a few of you were at a committee meeting at which you received an informational um, report from the Sustainability Committee based on, or Sustainability Department, I'm sorry, based on a, um, a draft resolution from the Citizens Sustainability Committee. Um, and I just wanted to pull out one of the items um, that I read on that resolution for highlighting, namely um, getting some outside help to, um, to move forward on city buildings, saving energy and money. Um, you're probably aware that the Winston-Salem Forsyth County School District last fall contracted with a company called Synergistic to help them with this uh, kind of action. Um, I have emailed all of you a link to the presentation by Lauren Richards, the Chief Operations Officer for the school district, um, in which she pretty excitedly explains that the um, the arrangement that they have with Synergistic isn't a typical consultant arrangement. It's really to stick with them for the full five years of the contract and see the, the um, issues and the, the developments through. Um, and even more interesting, I think, is that they project to be saving, saving a net of over a million dollars a year for the next five years. And by the end, it'll be up to about a million and a half. So um, what I'm asking you to consider strongly is asking your executive team to meet with Synergistic and other companies like them um, to see what's available to the city. Um, and if the numbers look good, sign a contract, get us going. Um, I also have suggestions, of course, about uh, how I think savings ought to be spent uh, and earmarked. Number one, uh, three, basically three areas. Uh, the first and I think most important is public safety because the citizens of the city need to know that that's a top priority and they need to know, we all need to know that the savings that we achieve through sustainability measures can be put to good uses including public safety. Uh, number two would be workforce development, especially in areas that are related to the energy transition, things like electricians, plumbers, HVAC techs, um, which also contributes to public safety uh, as we have a, a better, more trained, well-paid workforce. And number three, roll some of the savings back into further sustainability projects, um, the kind that take more money up front and that um, may take a little longer to pay off. And since I see I only have 10 seconds, I'll remind you, Duke is raising energy prices a lot in the next three years, so we need to start saving. Thank you, and I'll see you next month. Thank you very much. Joanne Allen. Joanne Allen, P.O. Box 284-27102. Good evening to all, including the public audience watching this meeting this evening. First, I'd like to show my appreciation to the North Carolina General Assembly to those who voted to pass the Enhanced Transparency Act. North Carolina Senate Bill 473 last year, which became effective January 1st, 2023 of this year. It is a felony offense for public officers and employees to financially benefit from their respective positions, including officials who contract to benefit nonprofits. Let me repeat that again, nonprofits with which they are associated. The Enhanced Local Government Transparency Act also addresses contracts that would not benefit the public official directly, but would instead benefit a nonprofit with which the official is associated. Let me just make sure that everyone understand because the public, you all need to, to really Google this. You need to Google the 
<clears throat> excuse me, the Enhanced Local Government Transparency Act that passed by the North Carolina General Assembly and the governor, Roy Cooper, became effective January 1st of 2023. We are still requesting investigations from the state of North Carolina regarding the city government of Winston-Salem. It's time to clean house, and therefore we are now holding the state agencies accountable as well. Please contact your state representative, as well as Mr. Dale Falwell, the North Carolina treasurer, and the state auditor, Ms. Beth, I'm sorry, Ms. Wood, Beth Wood. All I can say is this, is that it's been many years and a lot of things have gone on and this city has truly suffered, whether you all think so or not. But you all, quite a few of you, have become multimillionaires as a result. And what we have to do is make sure that the public comes first and not this go alone, get alone, are you my friend, are you my associate, are you my buddy pal? See, that's where we have to draw the line. And trust me, we haven't stopped. We haven't slowed down at all. We will continue on this course until we get justice for the city of Winston-Salem. Thank you. Denise Campbell. Eunice Campbell, 5743 Antinum Drive, North Ward. Good afternoon, City Council. I'm here today to uh, give my last um, opinion or uh, responses to the hydroponics form. I am a person who is very business-minded when it comes to making certain decisions. From the word go on this project, my personal opinion was, I understand what is trying to happen, but the plan is flawed. And there has been no correction to that plan in the last six, or six years. The first original budget was $962,000, which was kind of a wow to me then. But now, here we are, and that was in 2016. 2023, the budget is, has blown up to $2.6 million. $2.6 million has been spent on this project because of a flawed plan. When you don't have a strategic business plan, when you allow people to when you give money to people who don't know what they're doing, this is what you get, okay? The council has never seen a sound business plan for this project, never seen projections, viable projections of what sustainability would look like, what, but you kept pouring money into it, never had a clue as to what to grow, how much to grow, the waste, distribution, but kept pouring money into it. Uh, Scipio said and during the finance meeting, uh, there may be a way to make a few dollars. The project is to the goal line. Um, Mayor Pro Temp Adams quote, is quoted as saying, well, I totally disagree because that expression refers to achieving a goal, completing a task successfully. It is often used to express meeting a deadline, which no, we're not there because you still have no idea what's going to grow, how much is going to grow. Even the break-even point where uh, Councilman Mundy asked about is un still unknown, and we're still going to have to keep putting money into it. 
Now, like I said, I understand the concept, and yes, it, uh, some type of help for food deserts is needed. But when we come up with these type of plans, we really need the people to come to you with good, sound business plans. Just like if I go to a bank and I need money, Campbell, I have to have up. a good business plan. Thank and you. one last thing, Mayor. Your time is up, Ms. Campbell. Okay. But a hope without a plan is just a dream, y'all. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. Arnita Miles. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, City Council members. Dr. Arnita Miles, 494 Smithdale Street, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I deserve that title, I earned that title, I'm gonna use that title. There is a strong coalition between the over $2 million spent for the hydroponics plant and the $2 million that this city council allots to homelessness. As many of you know, I am a homeless advocate in Winston-Salem and Forsyth County. Again, I say to you that this city council is allotting annually over $2 million to its homeless issues. But has there been any return in investment? of that $2 million for the, for the hydroponics plant? Has there been any return in, in investment for our homeless problems? You see, we have a homeless tent encampment less than two miles from this very building. Less than two miles. What are we going to do as a community to address our homeless problem? It is time for each and every one of us as elected officials, as communities, as taxpayers to start working together. So let's talk about solutions. Let's start talking about how we can reduce the problems of homelessness. Let's talk about investing in mental health programs. Let's talk about investing in substance abuse programs. Let's talk about investing in low income housing. If you have $2 million for a hydroponics plant, don't you have $2 million to invest for our homelessness beyond the $2 million that you're giving annually? There's a problem. And you can provide the solutions if you work together with your citizens, if you listen to the people that have elected you. You asked us to send emails. You asked us to make phone calls. Some of you will not even return e emails, Councilman Burke. <laughs> Tell the truth and shame the devil. If I email like you request me to, can't I have a return email? So if you have $2 million, let's talk about resolutions, reductions, and let's talk about working together. Thank you, Council Member Cart, for being fiscally responsible to the taxpayers of Winston-Salem. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Miles. Thank you very much. Is there, is all that had signed up on the list tonight, Is anyone else like to be heard? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ralph Walters. I live at 5185 Ashland Drive at the intersection of Meadowlark. And uh, I want to make a comment. First of all, I want to thank uh, uh, my city councilman, Robert Clark, for pulling uh, C8 for a discussion. And so even though you've passed it, I would like to read this into the record. Um, city council must vote no on Smith Row Bridge Repair Project. A group of Meadowlark Drive residents are in shock to learn that the Winston-Salem Council have voted to approve a $1 million bridge repair project to Smith Row Construction of Mount Airy. Our group has been meeting to take action against the city and Smith Row for failure to finish the $7.68 million Meadowlark Drive widening project by the contract date of July 20th, 
23. Approved on November 16th, 2020, the widening project is only 30% complete as of this writing, when it should be 60% as the initial July completion date quickly approaches. Claiming they are understaffed, the city has granted Smith Row an extension to November 2023. Recently, we learned that Smith Row was planning to submit a claim for further extension. As most residents and commuters and Meadowlark Middle School parents can attest, Smith Row's heavy equipment and materials have been sitting idle to the point of rusting. Worse, some heavy equipment is parked in the front yards of frustrated homeowners. The construction zone has no reduced speed limit signs and there have been 45 accidents since the contract approval. Last week, a school bus was hit by a vehicle. This contractor has not proven themselves to be either responsible or responsive on the Meadowlark Road project. How can the city council approve a $1 million bridge contract when the Meadowlark widening project is terribly behind schedule? What assurances do Meadowlark residents have in believing this project will be completed in November? We want to see a commitment in writing that Smith Row will meet the November deadline with steep financial penalties before the city executes this new bridge, con bridge project contract with Smith Row, which is a moot point at this point, but you can furnish us with something in writing that Smith Row will be held accountable and will not be granted another extension. Yes, uh, as everyone who lives off of Meadowlark can attest, we see progress or lack of progress on that road many times per day. It's our only way in and out of our neighborhoods. And uh, yes, they were out there today. There were a number of people, workers standing around like in a conference looking, looking at a, 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 a curb uh, installation, but we want more. We've seen this before. They start up, they quit, they disappear. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Cynthia Harrison, 1200 Willie Davis Drive. I'm here. Man, man, man. Barbara Burks, you sit on the house where you're talking about affordable housing, but are you aware that in Cleveland homes, the many people that are being displaced that has nowhere to go, that's not affordable, you grant a habitat for humanity, property for a dollar. But how many of those people from Cleveland home is going to get any of those houses? How many can you tell me? It's a shame that those folks, instead of being moved out of Cleveland homes, they have been moved to the back. They have not found a home. And then with the uh, vouchers, the vouchers does not approve to be anything because of the simple fact is that when you find a place, um, somehow another house can deny your application because they say that you have to be within a certain amount. I can't understand that. Uh, like I say, it's too many people that are being displaced and you all are talking about affordable housing when y'all got all those people in Cleveland homes that has been displaced and now one of them, not the majority of them should have been put into a decent house, have not been put into a decent house. How many of y'all council members are aware that those people have been put in the back of the Cleveland homes and have not been moved out? How many of y'all are aware that there are nowhere for these people to go and what y'all talking about affordable and you saying that you sit on a, on a committee that you represent and you talking about affordability and you can't even get grant us affordability at 1200 Willie Davis Drive? Barbara Burks, I don't know what to do about you, but you know you're coming. It's coming, baby. What you're doing in the dark will come to the light. It saddens me that I have to come up here and remind y'all that everybody don't have to live richly. I'm rich with whichever mean that I'm at, and I'm comfortable, and I'm satisfied. I don't have to have a million dollars, but I do want to live comfortable. I do want everybody to be able to have somewhere to go. Those people have nowhere to go in Cleveland home. Right now, I'm looking again for my daughter to be able to find somewhere to go because Halls turned down her application because they wanted the manager to reduce the rent to $200. The $200, the utility was already included in it, so why should she have to find somewhere else? They only gave her another 60-day extension. They're talking about trying to move her to the back of the apartments. That's not happening. You all know, especially you, Denise, Dee Adams, you know how the back is in Cleveland home. You've been there. Ain't nobody going back there. I'm, I'm not. She's not. So 
when y'all doing y'all little assessments and everything, y'all need to think about affordable housing and the people that should be able to get affordable housing, but there is none available according to you all and where they can go and you all should make some kind of consideration and some kind of arrangement to provide for them to have affordable housing. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Thank you. I will close the public comment period and would entertain a motion to adjourn. Move for adjournment. Second. Motion and second to adjourn in discussion. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. We are adjourned.